Ladies and gentlemen, this is how I look at 85 millimeters at f1.4. Bokehlicious, buttery, creamy. Isn't it amazing? The depth of field is paper thin, and I am within that narrow plane of focus. Ladies and gentlemen, I will be reviewing the Bell and Howell 85mm f1.4 as spherical lens for Nikon. This is my most favorite piece of glass that I currently have and I use it actively on the Nikon D600. It is also good on crop sensor bodies like the D7100 or D5100 or D40. This lens is strictly manual focus only. There is no autofocus on any camera, even ones with a body motor. The focus ring is very well dampened, which makes it perfect for video. It's stiff enough so that way you can't accidentally jerk it out of focus if you're carrying it around your neck, but it's not too tight so that way it's too hard to focus. Here's the supplied lens hood. The lens hood tends to fall off easily, so just beware of that. The beautiful front element. For the most part, it's very round, which means that any aperture, the bokeh is going to be beautiful. Take a look at the contacts. This is the type of lens that has an aperture chip, so you can use the camera body to adjust the aperture and the metering and the exposure compensation and the focus confirm. So that means when a little green light comes on inside your viewfinder, that indicates that your shot is in focus at the focus point. Canon does not have a focus confirm chip in their version of this very same lens. The minimum focus distance for this lens is one meter, or just a little less than four feet. This is how it looks at infinity. Now let's see how it looks up close. I'm going to focus back to infinity and watch it disappear. The depth of field at f1.4 is extremely shallow. So if you focus on something close, the background will melt away. And if you focus on something far, if you have something close, then the foreground will melt away. This may be difficult for some users if you use manual focus wide open at f1.4. Using live view may be the best option for some of you who want to manually focus. This is how it looks through the viewfinder at infinity. Now watch as I focus. And if you look to the far left in the little green area where all the numbers and letters are, you can see that when you get close to focus, a little circle will appear. That circle indicates that it is in focus. When you move towards infinity, it'll point towards the left. Turn the focus ring counterclockwise to get it back in focus. When you focus closer, you have to go towards the right and focus clockwise. I am now about to go take a picture, now that it is in focus. F1.4 is very, very sharp. When you stop down to F2 or F2.8, you still get amazing shallow depth of field and wonderful bokeh quality, and it's even sharper. At F4, it is razor sharp, like super tack sharp. I mean, f1.4 is still impressively razor sharp, but imagine what f4 would look like when you review it. It'll be so sharp, you might cut your eyes open. This brand, Bell & Howell, has been discontinued, but if you want to go buy some new, look for Rokinon, Samyang, or Boer. Those brands still live on, and you can buy them for about the same price. Image quality is identical, 
to this Bell and Howell lens. You can buy it from anywhere around $250 to $325. It is totally worth it. If you can deal with manual focus, which I'm sure most of you can, I believe in you, then I think you will be very, very happy with this lens.